Your teens stop talking to you. They shut themselves away in their room for hours at a time. Any response you do get is an angry one-word answer along with some annoyed eye-rolling. Take a deep breath. Pulling away from parents is a completely normal part of development during the teenage years. Whether you should be worried or not really depends on why your teen has stopped talking. So let's look at three possible reasons why your teen won't talk to you and what you can do about it. Hello, I'm neuroscientist Dr. Ben Webb, sharing brain advice for a mentally healthy and happy midlife. Welcome to episode 78 of Better Brain, Better You. Thanks so much for tuning in. I want to get really practical with you today and help you deal with one of the most common challenges faced by parents of teens. That's the wall of silence and monosyllabic communication we often get when we talk to our teens. So shutting down or exploding are both ways that your teenager attempts to manage their stress. In fact, these may be the only ways your teen knows how to communicate when things get intense, which of course only causes more conflict. So communicating in the right way with your teen so you can stay connected with them and be available to offer help and support during these turbulent years is one of the pillars of parenting teenagers. So to help you approach talking to your teen and to avoid conflict, I want to share five secrets that we found to be really, really helpful for communicating with teens through the difficult adolescent years. So we've put these five secrets for, for communicating with teenagers together for you into a free and quick to read guide that you can get at ologyonlinecourses.com forward slash five secrets. That's ologyonlinecourses.com forward slash five secrets. So the five secrets in the guide are a really good place to start when trying to talk to teens who have shut down. So what do you do when, you're, when your once shatty teen has suddenly stopped talking to you? No parents enjoy getting the silent treatment from their child, especially when you feel, feel like you've enjoyed a really close relationship with them and nothing has changed on your end. So the first thing to do is to take a breath and understand that pulling away from parents is not only normal, but also actually necessary, a necessary developmental stage of adolescence. So navigating this transition towards independence is difficult as much as children hate to admit it and probably won't, they still need their parents to stay connected and involved in their lives. So teens need their own space, but they also need their parents. And in fact, most teens say they want to be closer to their parents, but don't know how to do that. So while your child is doing the work of separating, you need to do the work of carefully bridging the gap and staying connected. So start by meeting your teen where they are. And whether or not you have cause for concern really depends on the reasons why your teenager has stopped talking to you. So let's take a look at three possible scenarios. So first, you and your teenager used to be best friends. They told you everything, and now suddenly they've shut you out and they only share their private, f- private thoughts with their friends. So in this case, you have very little to worry about, and painful as it may be, you have to try not to take their, take their choices personally. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing during their adolescent years. And here's what to do. So don't lecture them or tell them how hurt you're feeling. Try to have a positive interaction, try to have positive interactions with them. Engage them in activities you've enjoyed doing together. Sit down to meals with them. Don't pump them for information. Instead, open up and share something funny or interesting about your own life. If you open up, they're more likely to do the same. So talk to them like an adult with respect and make it clear that you value their opinions and want to be respected in return. So the second scenario is your once lovely and affectionate child now responds to you with one word answers and annoyed eye rolling. So they spend as little time with you as possible and seem to reserve all their enthusiasm for their friends. So even though it may be annoying, and you might be tempted to punish this kind of behavior, it's actually really important to realize that this still falls well within the range of normal and typical teenage development. Focusing on their peer relationships 
helps teens learn to be less dependent on parents. And that's a necessary step to becoming happy, independent adults. So that's so that said, it's still your job to insist on respect and to keep your teens safe. So here's what you need to do. So set appro- appropriate limits, but focus on strengthening your relationship too. You'll get no respect if they don't feel connected to you. So resist the urge to lecture. So if you can do that, they won't need to push you away in order to become themselves. Remember that teenagers can be emotional. Look for the distress under the disrespect and remind them of who they really are. So by saying something like, I wonder why you're upset, because you aren't normally unkind, to try and create the beginning of a conversation. So the third scenario Your teenager speaks to no one and spends all of their time in their room with the door closed. So they have withdrawn from friends, lost interest in activities that once gave them pleasure and have grown increasingly isolated. Okay, so this kind of behaviour is a cause for concern and falls outside the realms of what we might expect from normal teenage development. So this behaviour could indicate the beginning of a mental health issue such as depression or anxiety all of which actually become much more common in the late teens and early 20s. It could also indicate that they're exploring drinking or drugs, or even have experienced a trauma perhaps that you're not aware of. So it's potentially dangerous if they're pulling away from everyone they know. Because retreating into an online world, let's say for example, isn't really a well-balanced alternative for talking to people in real life. Internet relationships can become very intense very fast and it's hard to know exactly how your teen's being influenced online. So here's what to do. So you should try and stay as connected with them as you can while also seeking professional help from a counsellor or psychotherapist. So if your teenager seems hostile and angry, give them a chance to explain their feelings and concerns. Use curiosity to share with your teenager what you think might be happening. I wonder if it always feels like we always say no to things and this is why you get so angry with us. Be accepting of their feelings and concerns to try and experience greater connection with them. Offering acceptance in this way demonstrates to them that their inner world is safe and it's not being judged. So validate their feelings by saying things like, and and show them empathy as well, such as it sounds like, it sounds like this was really difficult for you. I know how painful that can be. What empathy offers teenagers is an experience of our compassion towards them and our offering of support so they know they don't need to deal with the difficult feelings on their own. And Try and work with your teen to get professional help and explain that seeking help actually isn't a sign of weakness. So when it comes to the silent treatment, I'm afraid, remember, it's not about you. You have to pick your battles and give your teenager room to grow. But you should also have to put your teen's health and well-being above all else. And that means staying connected even when they don't make it easy or fun. So that's it for this week. Look after yourself and I will look forward to seeing you next time.